Hello guys, West Country Explorers, Dave Hello. and Amy here. So this morning we did the safari tour around Longleat Safari and we've had a bit of lunch and we're now... Bought some, bought some animals. Yeah, and bought some toy animals yeah. as well from the shop. And we're now going to go on a little tour around the house. You can see it behind us. But what I'll do is in a minute I'll twizzle the camera around to show you the front properly. So hopefully I can do some recording around inside the house, do what I can. So, what do you say guys? Should we go for a tour? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Get out of the cold. That's right, yeah. Come yeah. join us on the tour around the house, guys. Uh, so this is Longleat House and this is just the front of it. Now, when we were doing the tour around the safari, the tour guide said there's 365 windows in the house. What's 365 yeah, windows? Yeah. That's right, yeah. What I'm going to do, guys, is going to slowly twizzle you around. I mean, this is a mahusive great big area. If I remember rightly, guys, at its height, at its peak, Longleat Estate had somewhere like 500 odd thousand acres. Was it I I somewhere like that? It. it hasn't got quite as much now. I think they had to sell quite a bit of land to pay off the fifth mark creases, debts and that. So, mm. but yeah, there's a had an awful lot of land at one point. Mm. No, oh, you're not in the way. You go through everybody else's bedroom to get to your own, becomes inconvenient, corridors are modern in this country, uh, and in the early 1800s a, an architect called Wyatt is brought in by the second Marquis to improve the place. Uh, has anybody been to Wilton House down the road? No, no, no. 18 quid, no lions, but many more paintings, much better lit, <laughs> and good statuary. We have no, we have no statuary at all really. Okay, so it's the same architect. So what I think was a big room, actually it's one of two corridors put in by Wyatt to link the wings of the house. The next corridor starts past where those people are at the closed doors. Uh, he also finishes, uh, the, the, if you like, the quadrangular shape of the house uh, by closing off and building up on top of the fourth, the north wall. And that allows him to put in yet more corridors, including ones of servants, and they can then move around the house to be less seen and less heard. And then, about 40 years later, we saw them. Uh, that painted by Hopner at the Royal Academy. Uh, again, the ceiling, copy one from one from the Virgin's Palace, and what looks to me like little Wedgwood figurines. That's actually a relief painting on black linen. We don't know the name of the artist, it's just one of Crace's workers. That's the quality of the painting. Anybody fish here? Anybody fish? No, no fishes? That's good. Right? That painting is out. Uh, however, that one, this charcoal rough down there, that's uh, Lady Violet, Lord Henry's mother. That's a charcoal rough by Singer Sergeant, you might know about an enormous painting in the Imperial War Museum, those blinded First World War soldiers having to march with their hands on each other's shoulders. Uh, Lady Mark had corgis, and one of the reasons the late corgi uh, had corgis might have been she would have played with Lady Violet as a young child. The bookcases are, are made for the books, uh, and each book is individually numbered. You can see the, each book has the right size slot to come out of it. Come in, come in, please. Practicing for the bottom. Right. So in the breakfast room, um, another room, another ceiling, another copy, another painting, uh, more gold. You're looking up at Justice wielding her sword, wearing gold, comforting the gold piece in the green cloak. If your mass teacher ever let you 
I describe circles as having corners. The doggy looking thing in the bottom left hand corner, that's a line of St Mark chasing away the beggar discord. Now the room is laid out as if it's the 1st of April 1949, April Fool's Day, because Lord Henry here has finished his breakfast, he's had his four sweet flakes, he's read the paper, I've checked it's the correct copy, and he's come to the front door to open it to paying business for the first time. And for doing that, it was called the Mad Marquis. Why would you let everybody in your house, and why would you charge them? Nobody did that. Um, we charge you twelve shillings. No, we charge you two shillings and sixpence. And I think you know you might be as old as me. Some of you, so you probably realise that's uh, twelve and a half p. If you're still on pocket money like I am, it's eight Mars bars. <laughs> um, now the reason he was doing it is when his father died, the fifth marquis above the fireplace. When Dad died, the death duties on his estate were forty percent. Now the guidebook says that's twenty million quid. I reckon you can double it. And nobody's got forty million in their piggy <coughs> bank. And anyway, the house's income stream has collapsed. It's the 1940s. Nothing's made of wood. Nobody's wearing wool. It's king cotton and nylon's coming. So there was no money. So whereas Lord Henry's grandfather to the left of the fireplace, one of George Frederick Watts' famous paintings, uh, he would have had up to 50 servants for just inside the house and his eight family members. Whereas Dad, he would have had only one when he died, and actually Lord Henry didn't live here. He lived in a, a cottage up the road. So there was no money. A uh, fortunate experiment worked, the house was saved, the tax was paid, and uh, the other stately homes start to copy and they've got their 40% too. Okay, uh, now, I think we'll go this way. So I'm going to show you a beam in a few minutes. So you can have a house like I've sat here or there, not at the head of the table, I've always presumed. <coughs> um, yes, uh, let's see. Uh, yes, yes, another ceiling and another copy. Uh, being technical for a moment, you look above you, the gold blobs in the middle of the circles, they're actually the heads of giant screws about so long, holding up the fourth ceiling. And the one above me there, that fell out a few years ago, narrowly missing our Sevra porcelain. Priceless, hand-painted, each piece unique, and uh, commissioned in 1777 to impress George III when he came in 1789. And to impress your king, you would give him ice cream. That's an ice cream server that we're popping in the middle. Um, should I do a ghost story? Yeah. Right, okay, so colour paintings to get to the ghost story. In front of me is John, the builder of the house, the only image we have for him, that very dark painting. And uh, to the left of the fireplace, that beautiful lady, she's called Louisa Cartwright. And she was the second wife of the second Viscount. And it was a love match. And it is said that Louisa Cartwright still walks the corridors of Longleat House, especially at night, opening and closing doors, looking for her handsome footman, because... Gossip has reached the ears of a very angry, very jealous second Viscount, who's confronted our handsome footman at the top of some stone steps, giving the man an angry shove. The poor guy has tumbled backwards and broken his neck. The body has got rid of straight away. And she's told, well, he's just left. Now, there are some truths here. First of all, he couldn't just leave. He's unemployable without her references. He's expected to say goodbye. Secondly, she would have had a handsome footman. You were judged by the good looks of your servants as well as your own glam and bling. Thirdly, this is a weird house. You've got to open a door. You can't open it. It's never been opened. It's a false door to balance the look of the room. Other times you do open a door only to find some fool has put a wall there to stop you walking that way anymore. And what's absolutely true is during the First World War when we were at the Relief Hospital and had three or four thousand injured soldiers through here, in 1915, one of these poor guys was coming down the grand staircase, and to steady himself, he put his hand on the wall. The wall was warm. It shouldn't have been. People rushed downstairs. A boiler had caught fire. It had already lit a beam, hence the warm wall. Fortunately, the fire was put out, and it's then decided to put a new boiler in right next to some stone steps. And to get the new pipe work in, they had to lift the stone slabs at the foot of the steps, and they did find a skeleton, and it was wearing the correct livery and leather jack boots of a footman of that period. So it must be true. Mm -hmm. Now we're about to walk past some, some uh, large white pots. It's all, uh, well, I've said about it here, there's just too many, many of you to, to stand and, and be bored by me looking at it. Uh, it was called white gold. It's very early porcelain. It's white gold because it was worth its weight in gold. Uh, the Chinese wouldn't tell the Europeans how to make the stuff. It was trial and error. It's all mycin. Mycin early on were about the best, but not that good. It's still cracking. Have a good look at the elephant on the bottom, and you'll see that it was cast by someone who'd never seen an elephant using drawings done by someone who'd never seen an elephant. Now, it's still white gold today. And the fox on the... 
Why is the ceiling suddenly so low? We squeezed an extra room in so Nanny could sleep upstairs. Bath in use until 1946. Uh, the tap's completely fake, so the hot water is now eight flights of stairs and two corridors away. State-of-the-art Victorian plumbing. Uh, when you finish, you've got a handle, a flap opens, water gurgles, and because we are Victorian, one doesn't look at toilets, we shut the lid and it becomes brown furniture. Likewise, there's a lid that goes completely over and round the bath, because we don't... So folks, you are in the nursery, and uh, the two crisping gowns, one was used, I think, in the late 50s, possibly early 60s, but actually embroidered date on the pillow thingy is 1867, and their Irish torsion lace. Uh, a couple of paintings from the very bottom there above the jug, uh, again painted by Rex Whistler, that's the previous Lord Bath, Lord Alexander, as a young boy learned to shoot. Above him is the present Lord Bath, Lord Sulin, painted by Paul Benny. And I'm told Lord Sulin doesn't really like that painting. When you see his sister here, Lady Lenka, you can see why. This is a beautiful painting, also by Paul Benny. I'll have that, he can keep that one. Now, Lady Lenka didn't inherit. She's older than Lord Sulin, um, and I'm told she's very glad about that. We well, imagine the hoovering for start. Uh, and also, the law has only been changed to the royal families, and these families are still the oldest surviving in their land. Behind you guys above the fireplace is a copy uh, of, a, of a painting of Prince Charles the First. Oh, secret, but at least that is more certain. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, folks, we're in the state dining room, the back of the goose, where the family had Christmas dinner. Uh, if we're in the state, too, dinner, we'll draw the curtains, we'll light, uh, we'll light two roaring fires. So you get a, yes, you get a good cafe now. Yeah. Uh, we'll light two roaring fires, more candles, please, and this wallpaper. Uh, it's made of leather, that's practical, it doesn't absorb the smell of the food. It's uh, 400 years old and uh, originally came from Cordoba in Spain, but it was embossed with gold and silver. So the effect in candlelight would be stupendous. And it was free. Our fourth mark was spent so much money in petition school, we just had it lying around and had it for nothing. Ceiling copy one from the Doge's Palace and paintings, copies of Titian's paintings. In the set, oh, anybody like Romeo and Juliet? No Romeo and Juliet bounce, yes? Okay. So if you come there to where that lady is, you'll see uh, possible Juliet. This lady here uh, was this young man's first wife. He's the grandson of John the Builder. Uh, Tom did, and uh, this lady's mother introduced the couple to each other and without the rest of the families knowing, behind their backs, uh, they fell in love and were married within 24 hours, to start seeing the connection. The two families, both alike in dignity, uh, were already sort of basically at legal war with each other and neither family would let them live together. Uh, a bishop was brought in later so that Tom could marry properly and the bishop investigated he found two things. One was uh, that the marriage ceremony was legal, and the other one was that the couple still loved each other. So that was that, and they then lived together. Uh, she's pregnant. It's very unusual to have your painting done when you're pregnant. My wife made me take a picture of her when she was pregnant, uh, so it never happened again. It didn't work. Uh, this poor lady, however, she's got a bad feeling about the baby, and she's right. It's her fourth child, and, and she dies of complications. <laughs> Okay, so we're now in the long room or long galleries that would have been in Tudor times. It's become a Victorian saloon or salon if you're speaking French. Um, uh, the tapestries on my right, uh, 500 years old this time, designed by Jean Michel Coxey, that Flemish again, and they're the second best of their type owned for those in the Spanish Royal Collection. And that's because they're second editions. What happens is you have 20 men making one of these panels, it takes them two years, and then they do it again. If you remember our elephants, that's uh, mice and wear again, Temple to Minerva. Uh, before it was, it's been updated a couple of times. She should be standing on top, by the way. Uh, before she was over there, it was in the Japanese palace in Dresden. Chinese temple uh, warmer, or Chinese temple cooler, depending on your guide, you get good value for money out of me. And uh, the black and white photo, I've got memories of doing this. Uh, when the safari park was first opened, and I came here in 68, I was going through some slides the other day, the one I'm to. Uh, when the safari park was first opened, you were allowed to picnic with the animals, but not with the lion. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Has anybody been to Venice? Yes, no. Ah, have you seen anything you recognise? No, no, no. <laughs> 
And I've had one visitor say, yes, okay, the rest of us, including me, don't need to go to Venice. You've seen some nice ceilings, one yet to go. Uh, this one, by the way, is a copy one from Massimo Palace in Rome. Uh, and some lovely fireplaces. Usually it's the top half that's the, that's the, the crace lot and copies of, of Doge's palace stuff. This time it's the bottom two thirds, though I don't suppose the Doge has the fig leaves. There again, we are Victorian, and we're certainly not looking at that. <laughs> I rather like this games table. Louis the 15th this time, beautiful parquetry. The reason I like it so much is when you've got bored of the game at the top, uh, on, the, on the top, you lift the lid off, and there are seven further lids inside. Yeah. Now, the very dark wood is called amaranth, or purple heart, and it's faded. It should be a rich purple colour, and the lids inside haven't faded, and they are a gorgeous, purpley brown colour. Feeling for once, it's a gentleman who withdraw off the state dinner, and it will be the ladies by the fire in the saloon for their cups of tea, and we gents, we come in here for our cigars and brandy. It's got that feel, hasn't it? I'm terribly sorry about the carpet. It was originally designed by Crace to be a rich red and gold to match the rest of the room, but when the fifth Marquis is away, his wife dyed it green. <laughs> oh, the fireplace, original the speaking one, you've got uh, a Tintoretto, you're looking at... Uh, Persephone, and she's just been caught eating seven pomegranate seeds. And for doing that, poor thing has to go back down to the underworld where this is uh, to be Pluto's wife for, for six months of the year. That's why we have the seasons. Now, the paintings are always going to hang in this room when they're decorating, and have always hung here ever since, making this the most originally hung room of its kind in the land. And to prove my point, if you look up at the ceiling, at the white moulding, you'll make up pomegranates, and that's because they knew the, the Tintoretto was coming in here. Okay. <laughs> what are these? Um, Designing. Right, the red fire screens. Uh, in their yeah. 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 They stop your, they stop ladies getting the blue. This is sounds terrible. So one of the reasons why you have a long yellow yeah. in the tube yeah. times, yeah. particularly ladies can walk there on, on bad weather days, and that includes sunny days. Do people say they like that painting? A few tours you could get, but they're not. Uh, to give you all bearings, so that's the, uh, those double doors are to the viewing gallery for Charles II. Wow. So you're above the Great Hall. And I lied to you a few moments ago, that's what guides are for. All the paintings have always hung here, except for this one above the box. That's the most valuable painting in the house. And like the other paintings, it used to hang here. Until 40 years ago, somebody broke in and stole it. And then it disappeared for about 20 years, until a so-called expert said, I think I've seen Titian's first great masterpiece, which this is, showing Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus resting on their flight to Egypt. Is there a reward? And funnily enough, soon after this conversation, the painting was found in a blue and red carrier bags at Tesco's, in a bus stop in Richmond, Surrey. It's a remarkable family. We find orphans in woods and Titians in bus stops. <laughs> it's a story from Shaftesbury. Yes. Okay. So we're looking at the grand staircase put in by Wyatt. The chap put those corridors in, etc. He ripped out a staircase we've lost from somewhere else in the house, not there, that had been designed by Sir Christopher Wren. Wren's a local boy. He was born this side of Shaftesbury. Uh, originally, there had just been the three huge paintings in front of you: a lion hunt after Rubens, and either side two Schneiders again hunting seeds. We've got the small children for tea, so I can't do how to change the cameras. <laughs> I promised you a Cassoni. Do you remember? <laughs> right. Uh, so this isn't a bedroom. Okay, that's just a stage prop. Um, this is a huge walking wardrobe, a dressing room. The wardrobe itself, Louis the Fifteenth, but we've got provenance enough to suggest that it's once the property of Marie Antoinette. It's the wallpaper, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, very early 1800s, Chinese. Uh, hat, a block printed by hand and then hand painted afterwards. No true repeat pattern, no rolls of wallpaper, nightmare right. to hang. It's got people in it, that shows us it's for the European market. We've got at least nine other rooms decorated this way. What's most unusual is the lady to the left of the mirror breastfeeding. You just don't see that. Mm -hmm. now, I imagine these are locals for the factory and they're capturing some, some sort of village towns here. And it's going to be 
the good for keyboard really and left the drawer. Okay, so in half a bedroom, because that's a stud wall, so you would have had a huge bedroom, and under the huge arch, you would have had a huge bed. We now call it the music room on account of the two or three instruments in here. Uh, that's the precious one. Uh, it's just the keyboard. The ugly box is an ugly box. It gets more and more involved in the more you look at it. There we go. Um, and it's only 1600 or something. Uh, and it's on the wrong legs. It's on the, on the Georgian legs. So it's a bad marriage. Now, the keyboard is called an Italian Virginals. To play it, you slide it out, put it on a desktop, and then it's like a, a harpsichord, the strings are plucked. Why so precious? Well, it's had a couple of refurbs, but some parts are still pre-1600. And also, uh, it, it's what you gave your daughter when she's ready to, like, to start to learn to play an instrument. So it's a little better than a, a toy and all that smashed to bits. Was it you guys who like your paintings? My last try completely gaga. So yeah, no, 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 not bad. Okay, so in the Prince of Wales bedroom, so-called because of the chap above the fireplace, he should have been our King Henry the Ninth. He was Charles I's older brother and had many of the qualities that Charlie lacked. And that makes any kind of sense. He was always brought up to be king. However, he took a swim in the River Thames, uh, which is a little better than an open sewer. He caught typhoid and died. So he didn't get Ch Henry the Ninth, but Charles I. Quarrel with Parliament, English Civil War, his arrest, his trial, his execution. The day of the beheading was a cold one, and Charles didn't want to be seen shivering as if frightened, so he put a couple of extra layers on. The king now has his shirt. Uh, we've got the doublet. Why have we got it? It's the Deborah's, the Essex mob again from downstairs, uh, that Francis Finch woman. Uh, Charles's body was attended to by noble women, that was his right. They had undressed him, hence the keeping of the clothes, washed the body, and uh, uh, then uh, seen that the head was sewn back on, uh, so he could be buried in one piece and then redressed him for burial. So, not the most valuable thing, but in a weird way, perhaps the most precious. There you go guys, that was a little bit of a tour around the inside of the house. Um, yeah, some of the rooms were small and being in a bit of a large part tour party, I sort of, not as easy as it could have been to record the rooms to their bath, so, but I've done the best I could to record what was there. So. And I've taken a lot of photographs which we can put on the YouTube, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we've got a load of photos, so yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed guys and I did the best I could to show it off. And yeah, if you're into stately homes, I definitely recommend you come and have a tour yourself and see it at its best. What have you got yet? And Emma Weymouth, that was a celebrity on Strictly, is, lives there. Yeah, she married one of the marquees of Bar. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So there's a bit of like, yeah. celebrity info. Yeah. Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed. We certainly had a nice, yeah. nice look round. Yeah. And now, yeah, so I'm just going to bring this video to an end and look forward to seeing you in the next one. And in the meantime, the usual, stay safe, take care, and God bless. God bless. God bless.